Good morning, dear friends. What a beautiful day this day is. He has, in his grace and faithfulness and mercy, allowed us to see another day in our lives. It is his gift and it is his mercy. So we praise God for his faithfulness. And as we begin this day, it, will, it is wonderful that we can spend just a few minutes meditating on a scripture passage. And today, our meditation is taken from the gospel according to St. Luke chapter 2, beginning from verse 8. Now, this passage is the, the announcement of the birth of Jesus Christ by the angels to the shepherd. Now, all my listeners are very familiar with this. And so, from this what can we learn? That is the meditation. Now, the men to whom the message first came, consider that. To whom did the message from heaven, and that to the angels came announcing it? To whom? And it is noteworthy to consider this. They were shepherds. Now, what is the status of a shepherd in those days and even today? Shepherds are very simple people. They were everyday people. They were poor and they were needy people for everything they have to depend on this job. And they were out in the field in the night when the angels appeared to them. So to these humble, simple men, the everyday people, poor, and uh, not m uh, given much importance in the society, the angels appeared to them first, proclaiming, unto you is born this day a savior, Christ the Lord. Now, in James chapter 2, verse 5, we read these words. Listen to this passage. Has not God chosen those who are poor in the eyes of the world, to be rich in faith and to inherit the kingdom he promised, those who love him. Now this is so very amazing that the savior of the world was born in a human form and the first of humanity to listen and know this wonderful, glorious message from heaven are none other than the poor, simple, everyday people, shepherds. That's what James is talking about in his letter. Has not God chosen those who are poor in the eyes of the world, but they are rich in faith? And that is very, very amazing, and it's the truth. Uh, the want of money need not be a hindrance to anyone to be rich in faith. You don't have to be a rich person to have faith. And then you don't have, you don't need to be uh, uh, any, uh, you don't have to have uh, any kind of standing, standing in the community or society in order to have a faith. And in many cases, the poorer the people, the richer they are in faith. They are simple enough to believe the Bible. They are simple enough to have a faith in God. They are simple enough. And that's why they are the happiest and they are the richest in the eyes of God. Now, as I said, you don't need to be a rich person to have faith. You don't need to be a rich, influential person to, be, to, to have love in your heart. See, these are wonderful divine qualities which, in which we can be rich no matter what our status in the society is. The lack of education debars no one from knowledge of God's salvation. You may be a very illiterate person, Salvation has come for you too. And you don't need to have a degree 
in order to be saved by the grace of God as God reaches out to you in love. The shepherds whom the world usually ignored were the men to whom the savior of the world was first introduced. Think about it. Think about it. They were the privileged men to whom this announcement or this arrival of the savior of the world was introduced. And, and that doesn't mean the rich and the wise are uh, neglected by God. No. Now, the wise men, we have uh, another second group of people to whom this message has come in a different manner. The wise men, they had riches, they had education, and they had knowledge. But these things need not to be a hindrance to you. You too can meet the Savior. And uh, uh, such men too can be rich in faith toward God. If they are willing to see themselves as poor in spirit. Remember that. To be poor in spirit means though they may be rich materially, they are poverty stricken as far as spiritual matters are concerned. It means, though they may be highly qualified and uh, uh, academically, they are ignorant of uh, things of God. And even when you try to explain to this kind of people, they bring their own logic to explain everything and say, well, this is all just story. And when you admit of your spiritual poverty and ignorance, you are blessed. For you shall be satisfied. That is what Jesus taught us in the gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 5. Blessed are the poor in spirit. For they shall be, they shall be satisfied. So you need not to be rich. You don't need to be educated. You don't need to be uh, influential in order to experience the heavenly and divine favor. But very often, such people don't experience the way the poor people experience it because they have their own logic. If you admit that you are certainly poor in spirit and in spiritual matters, then God will be favorable to you and make you understand. So may the Lord bless you this morning that you will not, you may be rich or you may have education and you will not allow these things to make you poor in spirit. You need to admit that you are poor in spirit and understanding the spiritual matters, you are poor. And then God's favor will come and help you and you will be enlightened. May the Lord bless you. My friends, always remember the most favored people at the birth of Jesus Christ was the poor shepherd out in the field. God bless you as you seek the Lord with your heart and be blessed and be rich in faith and in the love of God. This day is a great day. As you progress in life and uh, go forward today, may the Lord's blessing be upon you. Lord, we pray for your Holy Spirit to help each and every one of us who heard this message, that they will humble themselves and seek the Lord that they may be enriched in their understanding of the spiritual matters. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great day and God bless you.